hey guys, uh, Isaiah and I were just having a conversation on something we had been working on. And I was telling him, I was having a chat with somebody the other day about the URL download to file uh, function. Yeah. Is it a function though? It's a command, isn't it? Well, it is a command, uh, but internally I, I it is. Yeah, exactly. The functionality, however you want to say right, it. Yeah, exactly. Auto hotkey. And someone was saying like, hey, you know, does that rely on IE? Because IE is dying. And I'm like, no, it doesn't, you know, and even if it did, you know, just use the, the Win ATP request. And there was, I think, some confusion when we were talking about it. So first thing for me was I went to, and actually, you want to go ahead and share your, do you have that pulled up? Yes, um, I do. The help file for the URL download to file. Yes. And sure enough, it does mention, like, does it say three, I think, IE3? Yes. So it, it says that it needs Internet Explorer. Uh, Three God or help. greater, right? right yeah. <laughs> no, so it, it just has to be an Internet Explorer after number three. So if you had Internet Explorer two, man, you're living, you're living, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you're, like you're, someone remember when they wrote us? They're like, "Hey, the OCR doesn't work for me." I'm, uh, by the way, I'm running Windows XP. I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, great, awesome." Now the reason for this, and this is something that I just, you know, just skimmed through and noticed is. That is using this function called the Internet Open URL function, and that function is relying on Internet Explorer. That's why, Interesting. right? So this is the, and you could actually go to Microsoft and check on it. Uh -huh. um, so um, now the thing is that it is it is interesting, uh, and probably at the time that Outer Hot Key was created, that was totally acceptable. But now we have different tools that we could use to actually access the internet in a different way. Now, your point um, and what started this whole discussion is that you were doing some, you were doing a tool for another company and you were like, oh, I created this tool for Internet Explorer, but Internet Explorer is dying, right? Yeah, but, right. Yeah, so, so, but me knowing you, I know that you use the win HTTP request and I was like, man, you, you don't need to, you don't need to um, um, rely on either Internet Explorer or Chrome or any other browser for that matter. If you do the request directly with the win HTTP request, right? Because the browsers, that's what they're doing. They're actually sending their requests themselves and then they parse the information and show it to you, right? If you are using Win HTTP request, you are sending the request and you're getting the raw data. The only thing that you need to do is parse it however you want, right? Yeah. So that was the that was the main point that we we're actually touching on. The thing I was going to clarify there though is is because it's something that when you're new to auto hotkey and programming and stuff, none of this stuff, you, you don't know any of this stuff. Right? I didn't know any of this stuff. I'm still <laughs> learning it. Don't get me wrong. But it took me a while to realize, first off, also, that it gets really confusing because with web scraping, we're always talking about the DOM because the DOM is critical and do, and it really is. However, that actual traffic, the you know, when you do the request with your browser, you know, mm -hmm. that technically is an API call to the server, right? Versus the when the when HTTP request, it's also an API call to the server. The most critical point, which, and I think you really made a really good point here a second ago, was your browser is actually converting it for you into yes. HTTP protocol, right? And it is, sends that, and it looks, and this is what we've done with Fiddler, right? We look at exactly the traffic of what happens with that versus with our WinHTTP request object from auto hotkey and they're identical right and that that's actually what we're trying usually trying to do is make them identical so now the server yeah. can't tell you know is there it, is, it, is, it, is it yeah but i i do want to clarify something there so okay. um the uh, the one thing that the, there is this you have to separate this part so one part is the communications layer which is the http protocol right and that is something that nobody sees. You, you don't see it, which is plain text that says HTTP 1.0. And then it says like, it's a get, mm -hmm. and this is the URL that you're gonna get. That is the protocol. And it is a very small piece of text that in, in your browser, you don't see that. So no. that piece of text is sent from your computer to the server. The server sees that and says, oh, that's what you want. Let me send you the HTML, right? So what the server retrieves is the HTML that is located at that particular place. Send this, sends it back as text to you. Now, 
when you get it, you are getting the HTML. So your browser is not converting anything. So you're getting the HTML file, which right. is a lot of text that has some tags on it. What the browser is doing is seeing those tags. And if it says strong, it actually makes it bold. So well, when you see the web page, you see the links, you see the bold, you see the underline. That's what the browser is actually right. changing However, back for you, right? Let so, me elaborate a bit more. I'm going to take it one step further because you're, okay. you're absolutely right. However, I think it was a little slightly overstated because your browser, when it does go to a page, it might trigger 10, 15. Oh, pages. right. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you do get and you'll see them with Fiddler. This is the really cool thing. You'll see that right. traffic of like, oh, there was actually this whole separate API call that did return JSON data, right? Yes. And then your exactly. browser will take that JSON data and shove it in there probably with um, yes. um, JavaScript with or something the HTML, like that. Right. So, so it actually not only gets the basic yeah. HTML, but it actually can kind of parses right. and modifies right. that HTML depending on certain things. Especially, for example, uh, one of the interesting things that we could talk about is you know that you send this a um, user agent, right? So this right. user agent yep. is a way for the browser to tell the server, look, this is a, this right. type of browser. So this is the type of information that I need. And the browser actually answers with yep. the information that that browser needs, right? In some cases, right? Not always, but you might get different answers depending on the user right. agent that you're using, right? Which is a really critical point to note is we, you know, like, so let me finish back where I was on where I was going with that is like when I see in Fiddler from a browser request and I see separate JSON data, I get so excited, especially when it was a separate API call, because I realize I don't have to do all that other crap, right? I can just redo this <laughs> yeah. and change some parameters and get exactly what I want. Um, it's awesome. Now, that is, you know, it's awesome, but it's it's different from where the, sorry, um, what, what was your point on the? So we were talking about. So I was talking about how the browser um, on, gets the complete oh, HTML. Yeah, so, right? so yeah. So that doesn't always happen, right? Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. if you start off and you send with the browser saying, "Give me this," it the server is going to give you what you asked for. What you may miss out on is like, you know what? Well, what if I only asked for JSON instead of the HTML version or whatever? Right. right. So I, that's I could the just danger. jump all of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So because it only gives you, like sometimes it'll parse it for you and, and you'll see they were different, but not always. And no, sometimes no. there are ways. And this is the other thing that really gets confusing when we talk about, hey, is there an API available? Well, you know what? They're they're all APIs, right? They're all returning server requests that you know that, that we send to. Now there's the public API, and then there's the, you know, there, then there's just the the private one. I mean the sorry, the general one, but there's a um a web service API that might be available where right. truly that doesn't usually return HTML. That's usually often JSON, sometimes XML. Um, I'm exactly. sure there's YAML or something else, right? There's a couple other ones, but but um, but those are the ones that, that you, oh, let's go look to see if they have an API, right? And that's where <laughs> right. And, and, and basically out. you are using an API, you are using, and, and, and my point, the, 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 the one thing that I do want to kind of like capture in here is that if you are, um, some people just go ahead and use the URL download to file, right? Right. Um, but if you are in the help file, you will notice right down here that they're using the WinHTTP request, right? Now, if you, by any chance, started using the WinHTTP request objects, then if you know how to use that, you can ditch browsers almost entirely, right. okay? Because... Anything that the browser can do, you can do it with the HTTP request. The one difference is with the Win HTTP request, you have to do everything yourself. That's all. Handle everything, right? Right. You have to handle the cookies. You have to handle uh, every single request and, and answer and uh, the status of the server and so on. So it is a little bit more difficult, but you can do it. And, and some people might say like, oh, man, um, I was so used to scraping data with Internet Explorer. You can still do it, and 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 you and I were talking about something a very specific situation in which you use win HTTP request, you send the request, the server sends you the HTML, and now we use this HTML with another object that we have in our hotkey, which is the the HTML file, right? Right, and that is converted into an auto hotkey object, right? Yeah, so, 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 we can navigate and parse really well, right? Yeah. So it is the same thing. The, the one thing is that 
now the the cool thing is that now you don't have to depend on Internet Explorer, basically, right? Um, directly in the sense of you know um, I need to have it installed or I needed to have it running. You don't have to, you know. Now, the little magic that you and I are working on was there's there's different stages of the API request, right? First off generally speaking, is you have to be logged in, right? And that OAuth, which is why I love like the XML HTTP request, because I can I can leverage, like I can log in with IE, and then I can yes. use the XML HTTP request. It'll automatically use the cookies and the authorization and everything else. I don't have to do a darn thing, and it's so easy. Well, right. IE is dying. Hey, with Chrome, we don't have that option. We have to actually handle everything, which is like what you said, but it's just, a, it's more, you know what I mean? If it's something I'm working on that I'm going to use a lot, that's fine, right? But what yeah, about something I want to do in five minutes? You know, and I'm like, hey, it, what if we could log in with Chrome and then leverage the Chrome's cookies and log in and just take it from there? And that's what you and I are, are like, hey, let's yeah, let's, see let's try it. Let's yeah, we, yeah, it is. It is a very interesting topic. It is a little bit complicated, right? And especially when you are in a language that does not have. Um, the infrastructure, the libraries for it, right. because right. in other languages, you can do it easy peasy, right? Even there are examples in other lab libraries to do that, but uh, in other languages, but in Auto Hotkey, there is nothing like that. You have to figure it out yourself. It is very annoying. No, I don't. I have you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, the funny thing is, um, if I remember correctly, and this is the part that I wanted to kind of like investigate a little bit longer, is that there is an object, and I think it's this one right here, the MS uh, MS XML2, which it handles logging in and and cookies for you. So it is. So Win HTTP request is basically for servers. Servers actually handle. Uh, so if your program is going to be a server, this is the the object that you would use. If your program is going to be a client. It would use this now. I am not sure if this one handles the cookies from Internet Explorer. It does, but but yeah. it handles cookies, uh, the local cookies, right? So if the server sends cookies, it gets saved, and during your uh, session, those cookies are going to be there, right? So, but not only that, it allows you to log in. That's what I understand, and this is better because the Win HTTP request for logging in with that particular function is, is a nightmare, uh, especially in certain yes. situations, right? right. So right. Uh, not, not always, because there are some of them that you can do it very easily, but there are some right. others that are very annoying to log in. Absolutely. And I think right. this object, there's one object, I'm, I'm not sure which one is it, but I think it's this one, that if the page has a login page and you need to log in to that, set, to that thing, you just put the URL and it will open the page to log in for you. You don't have to create it yourself. Which is good, which, which is absolutely brilliant, actually. But um, that is because this object is for client um, applications. That's why. Mm. So, uh, but, but I'm not really sure. I have to actually dig a little bit in deeper into it um, and how it works and kind of like make an example of it. But yeah, it is possible. If you use this object, then you are not dependent on the browsers. Right which is good because the browsers change very often, but these objects, they stay relevant for oh, years. Right. And, and that and was, yeah, that was kind of the core of where we were going initially was, we're still just sending HTTP requests, right? Yes. And, I'm sorry, protocol, right? So right. It's, yeah. it's still HTTP protocol. As long as we can send and receive that, we don't have to worry about the browsers, this or that. No, and exactly. Your, your point of the thing that I, well, A is when we are, replicating a web page, navigating the DOM is incredibly helpful. Like once I switched from, I used to write these crazy long regular expressions to parse, I get the whole page and then parse it. And it was just, it just sucked, right? And then Jackie, yeah. it's actually one of the first things where like suddenly I viewed him as this he god. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? What's just, he showed me how to do a table and to iterate over the cells and the rows and right, stuff. And yeah, like, oh my God. Like, this isn't anywhere in auto hotkey. So he's like, no, it's the DOM. And I'm like, what the hell is the DOM? And, and right. then and that's like, what, reading, I'm like, oh my God, you've just changed my life. You know, yeah, like, that's, what, that's where your brain expanded, right? It really did. Oh my God. Like, wow. yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, that happens to every single programmer. So whenever we start programming, like you, you have these simple ways of doing stuff. And then it happens that you but, get to this point that yeah. you see something so crazy, you say, right. really? Well, here again, now this is where, to me, this is where, and it's it's a little kind of gray hat, I think, is 
like I said, when you use your browser and you go somewhere to a website and you see your browser actually triggered a different API, an endpoint that's just returning the JSON that you want, like suddenly it's not a public API. It's not a, it's not one that you can go to an endpoint and they tell you all the parameters that you can use and this and that. But I can I can see that traffic and I can then I can use my browser to log in and do the authentication for me and then simply keep it going using you know what we're going to have for Chrome um, right. with those and, and return back JSON instead of the DOM. I'm not my point was right. So you, you don't want the whole thing, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm no. Because so, the file size difference it's like a hundred size you know hundred times bigger for the HTML versus the JSON, right? I mean, easily it's it's crazy. The way that, how to explain it is the following. So basically, yeah. this JSON that you're referring to, right? So that's that's kind of like the way how computers talk. And it is easy for computers to just send this one liner that says file, location, this, that. That's it, right? That's what they need. But for a you from a user's per perspective, I need a drop down. I need some edit yeah. buttons. Right. I need some things right. to fill out the data because it would be so complicated to fill out well, a lot of things if it didn't look pretty, right? So, so you're getting two. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go, go for it. it no, I was just going to say, like, the, 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 the one thing that you're doing is you're receiving two things at once. You're receiving one right. graphical user yeah. interface yeah. that you can see, right? Yes. yes. And on the other, yes. the other part is how to actually right. talk to that system. Right. right. Now, it is not gray hat for me. I it is it. like normal. It is normal. Yeah. And HTML is the graphical part of it right. so that we could see it. Right. Now, the JSON is how you actually talk to that system. It, so if you can well, see that, the then you can ditch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can yeah. ditch You so, can ditch the GUI and then just yeah. do it directly, right? Where I was going to go with it, where it, it is so funny because it's exactly the same thing, is it's how in our intro to GUIs course, right? right. We are leveraging the you know, auto hockey isn't dealing with all of the let's create a GUI and the drop and all these things, right? It's it's do it's wrapping the Windows stuff and saying, here's the meat, here's the stuff we need. But hey, you know what? Windows already knows how to do all this stuff, right? And, and someone smart enough for auto hockey has figured, you know, written it in a way to say, hey, go convert this to what is it, C or C sharp right. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? And, and figure that out for me because like my word, I don't want to solve that. Um, but again, it's why we can do so much with so little. Right, like it's it's like, hey, here's this little bit of stuff, and then we're not transmitting the the the, the beautiful part thing. of it. Right, it's, exactly. It's already there. Leave that there, and and that's really interesting. I hadn't thought about it that way. If there's the meat and the and the stuff that makes it look pretty. So right? basically, like, you, it, just to kind of like double down on that particular yeah. um, um, example that you made is like this: you have um, you have the knowledge, right, of writing a script that loops over hundreds of files and changes the volume using the FFmpeg, right? right? Yeah. You know how to write it. Right. Now, do I want to every single time write a script and actually copy paste a list well, of files yeah. and it read it? Right. No, actually having a graphical user interface where I could drag and drop, right? It's way better. So it is easier for me it doesn't mean that the computer needs that. The computer doesn't need that graphical user interface. The the, the, the the interface is just for me, for my convenience. Yeah. Because I already have the files here. I just want to drop them in somewhere and click a button. Now, what it's really doing is actually looping through the clipboard or the the the, the list of files that you give it. It's going to yeah, loop through it and it's going to copy. So that's the real way to talk with the computer and not even that because auto hot key is just an abstraction, right? So right. there's a, something below that, which is the real way of talking yeah. to the computer, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the same in HTML and websites. You get the, the HTML, which is the graphical, but the real way of talking to the computer or to the server is a different way. In Fiddler, you see that. And that's why you say like, oh my God, this is so cute. Like I, I, can, I can just simply um, uh, dump all the other things that I don't need, right? And that's the beauty of programming. After you figure that one out, 
then you can do a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, and it, it's funny, and it's the same lesson over and over, but it's also, it's very similar to when you start understanding using functions over GoSeps, right? And that like, oh, just by changing a couple parameters, I can redo this and I don't have to do all this other stuff. And I'm sure classes are just an extension of that, right? Even yeah. more is that, um, but it's it's really the same principle overall. I mean, it is. Concept wise, right? It's, it is. So basically you know, after you capture that one, you are almost there becoming a programmer because um, as soon as you understand that thing, you will see everything like that. And right. you will notice like um, everything that you read, oh, this is easier. Hold on. Is there an easier way to do this? I really think there is right. another one. So when you look for it, there you go. So I don't need to deal with this. I just do this. Right. Yeah. And, and that's what I, I remember talking to Matrix years ago about this. And I was beating myself up because I'm like, well, I would I put a little thought in before I start writing, but then I'd be doing stuff and then I realized, oh, wait a minute, I'm I'm repeating my code. That should have been a function. And I'd go back yeah. and convert it and do and he's like, that that happens to everybody. Like you no one spots everything, everything from the very beginning, right? You, no. you can note some of them, but even as you go, you're still like, oh, wait a minute here. If I just change this, I can add a parameter. And now I can get rid of all these eight different things. It's really the same thing. Yeah. Now, now you know why big companies refactor their code every single month. <laughs> no, <laughs> That's right. what it is. Yeah. So they just, they, they, they just do that. So in, in any case, I think our, our point here um, being that, yeah. So the, 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 the biggest point was, like, yeah, so long as you know the one below, in this case, you have URL download to file, which depends on Internet Explorer. But if you know the one that is below it, right. which is a com object, right. now you don't have to depend on browsers. Now you're a little one step below. And even those things have something below them. Right. And that's the learning process of a programmer, well, right? Yeah, and actually, so not to throw this all in a loop, but I know you mentioned your curl library thing that you had as well, which is, granted, we're oh, using yeah. curl instead of uh, an actual built-in Windows object, but you can replicate, you know, a lot of the stuff with curl, which is also 100% sending... everything, right? Yeah, so and curl is thing, a library for that, yeah. And, and the one thing I will say on this one, if you are trying to learn API calls with that, when you go to read like a public, you know, endpoint for an API, you, you'll you'll see Python examples or Ruby, um, and often curl. You will almost never ever see like a WinHP request example, right? I'm, so uh, I'm gonna and actually I was gonna touch on that. The, the reason why curl is so great, it is just imagine the the WinHTTP object is to do this HTTP requests. With the web, right? Curl does exactly that, mm -hmm. but it is platform independent. Oh, so yeah. that's the so so basically right. the the Win yeah. HTTP request yeah. is just for Windows. Yes. Yeah, Linux it. right. has its own thing as well. They have their own libraries, but right. Curl is everywhere. You just have to download the DLL, and your program can call that. So yeah. that's the reason why Curl was. I, I, I still, I, so, so still is right. because I know that a few years ago when I did the library, it was like, you know, the bomb. Everybody was using curl, right? And that's the reason why right now you still see a lot of examples everywhere. Oh, yeah. Every, curl, everywhere right? I so, know, yeah. yeah. Because actually, it is, yeah. it is, it, it, it just means if you want to build an application, just use that library and you're good to go. That's it. Yeah. Well, awesome, man. Well, thank you. This was, I, I hope other people found, I found it fascinating, but um, <laughs> you're welcome. It no. fun talk to. It's very good. It's very good to have these talks. It, it, you even often we learn something ourselves, right? So we, we, yeah. we, we see some things and we're like, oh man, I didn't know that one. <laughs> right. So yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's, all, it's always, a, you know, we're all learning, right? That's, that's yeah. what I always tell people. That's already, nobody, nobody knows everything. Whatever. That's right. Yeah. All right. Have a good day. Same to you. Bye.